What's going on, everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to episode 11 of the San Antonio Marshals franchise. If you missed last week's episode, where the hell were you? Here's pretty much all you need to know. 0-16. First 0-16 in channel history. Let's get into the offseason. So first thing is first, as we get into the offseason, you can't go 0-16 and retain your coach. If those of you who remember when we way, way back in episode 2 or 3, when we were signing our staff, Blazer was literally our last option. Uh, I think we had three to four different head coaches turn down the opportunity to uh, come coach with us. So that was a little bit disappointing. So Blazer literally was like the scheme and defensive scheme that we wanted. That's the only reason why he got the job. So, uh, you know, you go 0-16, you're going to get fired. And before we get into the new league season, I said we would take a quick look at the final year awards. Tom Brady got himself an MVP award here. Uh, no one's super surprising in that list. Um, I guess that's pretty much just Coach of the Year went to. Fake Belichick. Cool. But Tom Brady got himself an MVP. In terms of coaches, there are some fairly interesting ones here available. A lot of these guys more so have just offensive coordinator experience, QB coach, stuff like that, positional coaches. we got Dirk Cutter here. Uh, Sean McVay uh, just pretty much graduated. I think he's a year out of college. So that's, I think, what I can't remember what school it was. Was it Miami, Ohio? Something like that. Um, go down here. We got Hugh Jackson. We got Bill O'Brien from that Bill Belichick tree. A little bit interested in that. There's another Bill Belichick tree guy here. And Matt Patricia Young. I think he was somewhere a, a positional coach there. You got Sean McDermott, formerly of the Eagles. Uh, but I think the best initial hire that we're going to go is Nathan Cable. I think West Coast, base 4-3. Everything that we're looking at, you know, highly regarded coach. We'll see if he will take up this opportunity to try and turn around an 0-16 squad. And, hey, we got a high enough pick. We have two first-round picks to maybe get the quarterback that he needs to run his system. And, boom, no issues this time. Cable accepted the three-year, $3 million deal. So let's go. Let's get to work. <laughs> you can only go up from 0-16. But, hey. It all starts with a great free agency period. We have not been very active in free agency, so let's try to fix this roster. So as we hump into the free agency process, you know, I would like to spend. We haven't spent really before, uh, but we're not just going to go crazy. You have to remember that we have a lot of young talent with great dev traits still. So here's the two players that I'm looking at addressing in the secondary. So we got starting strong safety, Coleman. Uh, he's been productive, but he's 32, so we look at uh, available market. You have Marcus Anderson, 92. He's 27. Um, so, you know, we're going to come in with a red, a $19 million bid, uh, a lot more than second place Tampa Bay Buccaneer. So I feel confident about this. And the next up, get in a big time favorite, favorite, one of my favorite Eagles of all time, Sheldon Brown. If you've never seen his hit on Reggie Bush, just YouTube it. It's one of the greatest hits ever. So bringing in that physicality, change of mentality to our secondary. I see him as an upgrade over Aaron Glenn. And the, this is a tandem. The, the, the scheme mix match between him and Asante Sand was exactly what I want in our secondary. Uh, plus, he also brings some, you know, just general DB versatility. He can tackle like a safety, cover like a corner. So these are, you know, we, we gave up way too many points. You saw last episode, our offense was not that great, but also wasn't that bad. But our defense was, without a doubt, the worst in the league. And it starts with getting better in the secondary. And we got both of our players. Anderson accepted his deal, as did Sheldon Brown. So with that, we have the first and 25th overall picks in the first round. Let's get into the draft. All right, everybody. We are here to make it clear at the beginning of the, uh, the 2006 draft at pick number one. And uh, yeah. Um, so we got a lot of options here. This was actually, the truth be told, the first draft that I, like as a football fan, started to really take note of like all the prospects and stuff like that. Because I remember when the Houston Texans had the number one overall pick, everyone thought it was a lock for Reggie Bush. And they kind of surprised everyone by selecting Mario Williams. I mean, when all said and done, probably you give the edge to Mary Williams, but it wasn't as big of a gap as it kind of started out to be. Reggie Bush had a nice career, and at least from a bat, we, we have no run game. And Reggie Bush looks like an incredibly enticing prospect here. Very, very fast, just an incredible athlete, can do everything that you want. Um, you look at Vernon Davis, one of the greatest combines of all time, first place in every single attribute. I actually would like to potentially grab him uh, with pick 25. However, Tony Romo is just... You know, I view him as good trade bait. He should be good trade bait 
to other other teams in the league. Maybe other people think they could fix him. He's uh, I don't know if he lost his dev trait, but he's at least a star dev, 83 young quarterback. It's just not working out. He does not play well in the same, and that's what happens from time and time again. You've seen in all the realistic rebuilds, Derek Carr, Cam Newton, Matt Stafford. Even though they're a good quarterback, probably you shouldn't trade them. For Madden's sake, they aren't great in the sim. And if we don't decide to move on from Tony Romo this year and we can't luck out on getting a quarterback in the draft or a quarterback in free agency next season, next year's the 07 draft. That's where guys one of the worst QB drafts of all time. That's that's Jamarcus Russell territory. So with the number one overall pick coming off that huge USC Rose Bowl victory, coming out at 6'5", 230, Running a 449 in the 40. This incredible athlete. We're gonna try to salvage his career. We're gonna turn his career on. You gotta remember when Vince Young was at Tennessee, you know, he was really good the first year or two. Remember, he had all those come from behind drives and all that stuff. It just was more so uh the mental side, the off-the-field side that failed Vince Young. And I'm not speaking this as a big Vince Young fan. I was never really a huge Vince Young fan, but given where our franchise is, given what Vince Young means to the state of Texas, where San Antonio. This is going to be a type of play that we bring in that's going to be able to sell jerseys, help the fan base recoup from an 0-16 season, get some excitement around. So the first pick in the 2006 NFL Draft, your 0-16 San Antonio Marshals select Vince Young, quarterback from Texas, 80, quick dev. We got 94 throw power. We got pretty good throw accuracy. We got 90 speed, 89 acceleration. Now, the quick dab is a little bit annoying. I thought he might get a star, given the hype that he had coming out of college. But for right now, very excited to see what we can do with Vince Young. And now, let's see if we can try to flip Tony Romo for something. Maybe on draft day, or maybe we got to wait till maybe a QB gets injured, or another team's desperate enough at the beginning of the regular season. But we will try right now to hit up the trade block and see if we can move Romo for a first-round pick. And we have found our trade partner, not unlike... The Arizona Cardinals, when they drafted Kyler Murray and kind of got stuck with Josh Rosen. Tony Romo was a known commodity. We traded Tony Romo. Michael Turner, who was clearly on the outs, wasn't nearly as successful as Darren Sproles, but still a great value. Both these guys are on the right side of 25. Both have good dev traits. And we threw it in our fifth round picks to send him to the Detroit Lions for the fifth overall pick. Now, I'm a little bit worried because I'd be ecstatic with Reggie Bush for sure. But Barry Williams, I wouldn't. If any of these guys slip, I don't really think there's gonna be a bad pick for us at pick five, uh, pick number five in the first round. And we still also have pick 25, so three first round selections for an 0 and 16 team will definitely help with our turnaround next year. Best of luck with your future endeavors, Mr. Tony Romo and Michael Turner. And at pick number five, it was kind of surprising. We number two went Vernon Davis. So at five, we actually have the two players we're kind of hyping up: Mario Williams and Reggie Bush. Now, I love Mario Williams, but you have to look at our roster. O.C. Manura, still, I think he's 25, 26 at the most. He's almost a 90 overall player. We still got Jared Allen, who's developing very nicely. So defensive end would be nice, but we don't really need to upgrade there. But at running back, we just moved on from Michael Turner. We have Darren Sproles, who's more than fine. But I think, let's just draft the Rose Bowl. Bring in Reggie Bush, a premier A-plus athlete, no matter what way you cut it, no matter how you want to look back upon his career. And, you know, maybe a little bit like Vince Young, maybe he's not going to go to a crowded backfield. And maybe we can reach the full potential here for Reggie Bush. So at pick number five in the first round, the San Antonio Marshals are going to select Reggie Bush running back from USC. And he's coming in 78 star dev. That's that's good. I thought he might have been up into the 80s, but I will take that star dev trait all goddamn day. We got 94 speed, 95 acceleration. 83 ball carry vision. The juke and spin is absolutely insane. You throw in 76 catching, great catching ability out the backfield. You know, our, our biggest issue was the run game the last couple of years. You know, every time in the sim, our running backs are struggling to get over 50 yards. Reggie Bush gives us the best opportunity, even looking towards next year's draft class, to finally hit on a running back. So <laughs> just like that, we got your Rose Bowl in our backfield. Vince Young and Reggie Bush. And at pick 25, our final first round pick, there's three players that I'm kind of looking at. One, even though we, we, you know, we're content with our offensive line, I like Andrew Whitworth. He fits our rule of drafting a round or two within our pick. But I feel like we're going to have a very early pick in the second round. He still should be there. Then we have Greg Jennings and the toss up between him. And you got to look up here at San Antonio Holmes at wide receiver. Both these guys bring great speed. We got a 4 3 4 here, finish San Antonio. You got to remember that insane. Toe tap catch he had in the Super Bowl against the Arizona Cardinals. But Greg Jennings, also very good wide receiver and 
maybe the GOAT Madden wide receiver in history. He put the team on his back. I think for the means alone, we still need another wide receiver. Greg Jennings is going to be the selection here in the uh, final pick. 78 star dev wide receiver coming in 93 speed, 94 acceleration. Welcome to the squad. Greg Jennings, Wells Welker, Andre Johnson, now Vince Young, throw in Reggie Bush. The turnaround is immense for the Marshals. Pick one in the second round. We're grabbing him right away. Andrew Whitworth, legit baller. We Our right tackle side is, you know, a little bit inconsistent right now, so we'll sure up our offensive line for the foreseeable future. We're sucking the gigantic human being out of LSU, 77 superstar. You know what it is. All right, we're now into round three. You know, staying with our rule, we could select someone that's round three, four. We still have Devin Hester here in the second round. I feel like that could be a nice little project we can get and maybe move him back to wide receiver. I don't know what his catching stats are. So that's a gamble. Uh, we got Elvis Doomer here at Villa defensive end. Don't really need him. Uh, Owen Daniels at tight end. You know, don't really need him. Um, we got Brandon Marshall at wide receiver. Also, don't really need him, even though I'm very intrigued with his skill set. Uh, we already got five on the roster. So I think our pick really comes down between Owen Daniels and Devin Hester. And I feel like for the sake of knowing that Devin Hester could be a bust pick, at least for a rating, and we, we've had our, you know, we, got, we just pulled a superstar in the second round. Let's take a little bit of risk here with Devin Hester. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe we'll be able to catch clearly Owen Daniels with our third round pick. So let's grab Devin Hester here, the corner who eventually transitioned to wide receiver uh, out of Miami. We do have Josh Cribbs, but maybe he's going to be a slightly better version of Josh Cribbs because clearly, even though Josh Cribbs was an interesting option, didn't quite give us that big special teams boost that we thought he was going to bring. So we're going to select Devin Hester here. We got 72 quick, uh, not, not nearly as fast as I thought he would be, but uh, really, really electrifying. And uh, hopefully he will be as good of a return man as we expect him to be. So here's time for our full-on draft recap. You saw Vince Young at pick one, Reggie Bush at pick five, Greg Jennings at pick 25, Andrew Whitworth in the second, Devin Hester in the third. Here's how the rest of the draft finished out. I will say, uh, you know, I'm never going to get the cheesy pick all the time, but if they have a real picture for the sake of trying to make my roster more authentic, that's kind of how I actually picked the rest of the draft. It just so happens all the guys that had a picture, because sometimes it's like 50-50. Some of them I've never heard of that actually have a... Uh, uh, profile or whatever you want to call it in the game, but I actually know these guys. So in the fourth round, we got Steven Tulloch, 73 linebacker, sixth round, Rob Ninkovich, uh, defensive end, only 73. Like, you know, you might hear of these guys. That's not overpowered ranking by all, but still not bad. And in the seventh round, usually that's where you can take a shot at one of the UDFAs. Never try to go OP. Like, you know, there's Donald Penn, Marcus Colston still there. So I took the lesser of the two. We grabbed Brent Grimes. He actually looks like he's going to be really, really good. 74 star dev, even a better pick than what we got in the third round in Devin Hester, even though we knew what we're getting in Devin Hester. He's a return man, but that is a tremendous haul. And what do you expect? We need to take as much liberties and try to take all of our opportunities when you're all in 16, because clearly our good drafts in the year past have been doing absolutely nothing for our roster. Before we get into the preseason, all that stuff, let's kind of see how the first round shaped up here. So we saw Vince Young go at one, Vernon Davis went at two, Nata at three. He was one of my prime targets. Brickishaw Ferguson at four. Mario Williams, but slipped all the way to seven. Cromartie at eight. Uh, Tom Bahali. We got Mercedes Lewis. What the hell? Who's that? Jason Allen. Ugh. Don't know about that one. Uh, we got Greg Jennings. We saw AJ Hawk. I potentially thought about selecting him out of Ohio State at pick 20. Uh, whatever. Um, let's see who actually was the highest overall player in this draft class. Always like seeing that. Vince Young is tied with Nata, Davin, Joseph, and Mario Williams. Oh my God, Santonio Holmes might have been a better selection there than, um, than Greg Jennings. That 95 speed looks pretty good. But my God, look at Vernon Davis. Vernon Davis, tight end, 94 speed. Like Everything is off the absolute charts. Actually, I'm not going to lie. I might have pulled the trigger at pick uh, five. I might have gone Vernon Davis over Reggie Bush, even though we don't really need a tight end, just because I know he's such an athletic freak. And just imagine throwing slants to Vernon Davis. He's got to take it to the house all the time. But we got at Reggie Bush. I'm happy with our haul. Let's get into the offseason. All right, so I actually simmed the entirety of the preseason because I got a flight to catch in just a little bit, a little bit of a business-type trip, a little leisure, a little business Everything sprinkled in between. So my apologies for not doing the preseason. I'll let you know we did go 3-1. and one. So coming off an 0-16 season, that's pretty good. So uh, we'll take that. as there, Here's the outlook of our team. Here's how our team is going to shape up as we get ready for the beginning 
of the uh, of the 06 season. We're at 85 overall, 87 offense, 87 defense, which is very similar to what we had at the beginning of last season. Our offensive line, we got Jason Peters, Evan Mathis, uh, and Andrew Whitworth. Those are our three long-term starters. All these guys are on the right side of 25. We have two veterans here in McKinney and Stitchcomb. Those guys are almost in their 30s. So uh, sooner or later, we got to probably start thinking about the replacements because the regression is going to kick in. Billy Miller is still our starting tight end. He's 85, but he's starting to get there in age a little bit. Um, you know, he does have the quick dev, which helps, but ultimately he's got to start to regress, and we don't have anything in the uh, the pipeline in, in terms of a successor. So we'll have to probably look at tight end. Uh, wide receiver, we got great, great wide receivers. We got Andre Johnson, 99. Greg Jennings, uh, the rookie that we drafted in the first round. I'm actually going to have him start on the outside. We have Wes Welker in the slot. Bradford will be depth in the slot. And then we also have Josh Cribbs for a little bit of a return man, splash play type guy, gimmicky play. Running backs are Reggie Bush and Darren Sproles. We have Greg Jones at fullback, one of the better young fullbacks in the league. He also will be utilized as our power back. Vince Young, number one overall pick. He's our starter. He's our franchise. And I hope sooner than later we can get a bump up in that dev trait. On the defensive side, we have, we'll start from the secondary. We got Kerry Rhodes starting at free safety with uh, Marquise Anderson, the free agency signing 92 overall. It's a big get. Our secondary, we got Sheldon Brown, Brent Grimes, Asante Samuel, Patman, and Jones with Samuel, Brown, Patman, and Grimes. Expected to see a lot of playing time this upcoming season. Linebacking core, we got Daryl Smith, Jamie Sharper, and Foreman as our start. Actually, you know what? We'll get Paul Lick. Our first round pick last year will actually be our starter. Um, in terms of depth, not a whole lot. We got Stephen Tulloch, welcome addition. And on the defensive front, OCU Manura, Vince Wilfork, Gary Walker, and Jared Allen. I actually got a nice selection here in free agency of Brett Kiesel. If you're a Steeler fan, you remember him. But look at the scan. Look at the beard on this face scan. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know if that's just what they have for Eric Weddle, but he's also for this guy, and that's friggin' awesome. And our special teams is pretty sick. 82 punter, Chris Brown's a 91 kicker. And who are you going to punt it to? We have Devin Hester and Josh Cribbs waiting to return any kick and or punt that any team can bring at us. So... Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm literally feeling with this team, with how OP I think Vince Young will be, uh, we, we can make the playoffs. We could totally make the playoffs this year. We changed our schemes up, so we're a 91 scheme fit on offense. Uh, I think 86 on defense. And I just hope that the Sim Gods take favor. Because I think when we actually hop in and get some gameplay with this team, we're going to go off. We're going to dominate. We're going to win every single game that we play with them. I just hope the Sim is a little bit easier. So that will be the next episode. So I hope you guys did enjoy the free agency and off season here today. I hope you guys did enjoy the players that we picked. I think I tried my best to go with what you guys wanted me to select from the comments in the previous videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to continue to enjoy the flashback franchise of the San Antonio Marshals here on the channel. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out. Money I'm spending, I'm out and I'm shopping You talking that shit, when you talking and talking Look at my options, look at me dropping Ass in the game, like who are you stopping? Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never Not me, not me, not never I'm way too clever Look at the